I am happy to be joined with Rachel Strutt, the Cultural Director of the Somerville Arts Council. Hello to you, Rachel. Hi, Dave. Thanks for having me on your show. Yeah, of course. Um, so we're here to talk about the, the big event every year that the Arts Council puts on. Um, everybody, everybody loves it. It's, it's Artbeat, of course. Um, it's typically a multi-day affair over uh, at least one weekend in Davis Square in the middle of July. And obviously, there were some changes that needed to happen with the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And Artbeat's gone virtual. <laughs> uh, so, Rachel, um, before we start talking about the events themselves and, what, and how people can engage with Artbeat this year, um, let's talk a little bit about those, those changes and how you had to modify uh, all these various events to make Artbeat happen this year. Sure. So, so like so many cultural organizations and just organizations and businesses in general, um, 2020 is the year when you have to figure out how to pivot. Um, so like you said, Artbeat used to be a two-day celebration in Davis Square. And this year we decided to extend it into an eight-day festival that is partly virtual and partly real life happenings, but all staged in a very safe way um, so that we're following strict safety COVID protocol. Um, so it's a mixture of events that people can tune into online, but there are also a lot of art installations and interactive activities which are happening out in the streets. Great. So it's a, it's a combination. And, you know, interestingly, I think we might have thought like, oh, Artbeat will be so much smaller this year. But if anything, Artbeat is as big and has been as time consuming because it has been a lot. It's been a, it's been a fun challenge to figure out how to make it happen living in the, you know, the times that we are. Right. Yeah. And, and like you say, a lot of cultural organizations are, are having to rethink events like this. And it's interesting to hear you say like the, the initial impulse was like, oh, we have to go smaller. But because so much so many things were are have gone virtual, um, that there's actually the possibility to make it bigger. Um so that's that's exciting and that's an exciting approach uh to hear that you all went with uh with RB. Because it is it is like a signature uh event in the Somerville Arts Council uh, and City of Somerville calendar that a lot of people look forward to. Yeah, it's our it's our biggest event of the year. Um, so, so yeah, and I think that during these times, the opportunity to bring people together through culture and the opportunity to support artists um, during this these hard economic times, it's it's more important than ever. Mm -hmm. And the theme of this year's art beat is chance, and was that. Was that determined before uh, the the closure in March or or uh, afterwards? So we came up with that theme in January, and interestingly, we wanted to choose something light and playful this year because last year our theme was consumed, which addressed um, uh, consumption as it relates to the environment, and it was a great theme, but it was definitely one of our more weighty themes. So we came up with something that we thought would be playful. Um, and then 2020 happened, and the theme um, took on a poignancy, um, which um, has actually been lovely in a lot of ways, um, but it's not something that we expected. And now Chance is taking on much weightier connotations. And our graphic, which was designed by Paula Champagne, it's a, you know, a beautiful image of a um, a, a black woman with a beautiful afro walking on a tightrope, and again, that that image is something she came up with, you know, back in January, February, and now given everything that's happening with the uh, powerful Black Lives Matter movement, um, that as well takes on um, more poignancy than ever, and I think it's just this beautiful, powerful image that we're so so happy to have be the the, the graphic for our festival. Mm -hmm. Um, so why don't we talk about some of the um, virtual events that you want to highlight. As I'm looking through this press release that you provided for me, uh, I'm seeing a lot of music. I'm seeing poetry. Um, so w w uh, why, don't we, why don't you highlight some of these that stand out for you? Sure. So one thing we wanted to do with music is um, 
also help support the local rock clubs because I think music venues um, are going to be so hard hit. I mean, Boston has already lost venues like, um, oh, what's the one in Alston? Great Scott. And I know clubs in Somerville are already really worried about their future as well because it might be a while before they can open up to the public. So we partnered with them to have performers. We selected the bands in most cases And then um, they're actually playing there live, but following strict safety protocol, no audience. um, But it's a way to have the performer actually perform in a venue, have professional lighting, professional videography. And also we are, you know, paying the clubs to help with that tech support. So just like when we have Art Beat outside, we're playing all the tech paying all the tech people to like help set up the stage and all that. We're trying to continue that now and also just create awareness that, um, you know, some of these clubs like once, for example, once ballroom is now once virtual venue and they are just really trying hard and doing an amazing job to um, encourage people to still come to all their shows, but come to them virtually. So, um, so that's kind of the the approach we're taking. But um, as far as the lineup, um, we're kicking off the festival with a um, a dance party um, featuring um, Saucy Lady, who um, used to, or I or used to at least um, spin uh, at dance parties um, at the Middle East, for example. Um, So that should be a lot of fun. That's a way to like you know bust a move with strangers um, that you've never met in the comfort of your own living room. And then um, on Saturday night is kind of our big um, show at once virtual venue. And it will be um, the openers will be the mystery um, and then Grace Gewurz. And then the headliner will be new aura and new Aura. it will only be a duo because we have to, again, do what's safe. The other two openers are solo performers and new aura is a band that I stumbled upon at porch fest, which this year became couch fest. And it was these two guys in their attic tricked out with like cool lighting and ambiance playing this like amazing, like psych rock ambient, like beautiful noise. Um, So we thought uh, we'd have them headline the event. So I'm really excited about them. And then we, the, throughout the week, we'll also have performances at the Burren with Danielle Moralia and, um, Optic Bloom will be performing at the Jungle in Union Square. And um, we'll also have a, a, a performance at Arts at, at the Armory, which will be a trio of um, women. It's uh, apparently the first Latin all-female band in Boston. Um, so we're really proud. Like, we always try to be as inclusive as possible when it comes to our lineup. And I think this year is a perfect example of that and maybe – um, represents even more diversity than we've had in, in past years. Um, so we just encourage people to go on our website and, and find out more about our performances. And then one music performance will be an actual performance. It's Marcus Santos, who you may be familiar with. He's a, a drummer from Brazil. And um, he is like, he is like Mr. Sunshine has so much charisma. And then you give him a drum and it's just, you know, magical. So he he's, actually a fixture, he's usually a fixture around Carnival, right? In East Somerville. Yes. Exactly. So he actually came up with the idea, like, what if he hides in different places around Somerville, like hides behind some trees on the bike path or hides somewhere, you know, down in East Somerville and then perform. So that's what we're going to do. We're not telling the public when it's going to happen. It's by chance that you might stumble upon some like loud, um, infectious, you know, samba drumming. And we'll have signs that say like, you know, enjoy the beats, but keep moving your feet. So to make sure that it's all really safe. Wow. That, that's a great idea. That's I, 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 I wouldn't have thought uh, to do like uh, such a gorilla performance. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, that, that's a, that sounds like a lot of fun, and you like you matched a really great energetic performer to a performance like that. Um, and I'm curious to know how how much of this um, matching performer with venue, how involved were the venues in that? You know, were, were were you curating these with these with certain venues in mind, or were venues saying, "Oh, we have this this performer all set to go, and it just happened to align with our beat"? How did that work? Um. So every year we put out an art beat talent call and a lot of bands, bands more than any other type of performer, um, 
submit applications. So we went through all those applications and we couldn't choose as many this year. Usually we have 15 bands, but we chose, I think we have about eight or 10 performers overall. So we chose quite a few. Um, and then some of the other venues chose their own bands, but I especially want to give a big shout out to Bridget and um, JJ Gonson at Once Virtual Venue because they, you know, helped us come up with this idea of creating a partnership and it's called Art Beat Takeover at Once Virtual Venue. And they, I actually went to um, the first performance, which will be videotaped um, and shown on Saturday night at Art Beat. Um, it was Grace Gewurz. And they are such pros and everybody was wearing masks and everybody was, you know, 10 feet away from the next person. And they had two videographers there who had five different cameras. I mean, they are such professionals and the sound guy Goose doing an amazing job. Um, and then they're also helping us figure out the tech aspects in terms of, you know, creating, uh, you know, links and doing the Facebook live. Um, so it's been wonderful working with all the clubs, also Sam at the Jungle and the folks at the Burren and Stephanie at the Armory. Um, but it, it, Bridget and I and, and JJ were basically meeting once a week to figure out how to make this happen for the past um, couple months. And, well, and then to answer your original question, they also had some ideas as to who the performers would be. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it was Bridget who said like, oh, I love Grace Gavertz and we had had her in the past, think she's great. So um, they chose her. And then it was also Bridget who suggested Optic Bloom for the jungle. Um, so, and I haven't seen them before, so I'm really excited to see them. Now, if somebody uh, wants to see this schedule and to go to the, to, to the links, the, the, the date and time of an event, um, what, what website should they go to? They should go to somervilleartscouncil.org slash artbeat slash 2020. And uh, right now the, the full schedule um, PDF is there. And then we're also during this week working to populate um, the website even more. So it'll be e easier to navigate, but you can easily download a full, you know, the, the full list of um, acts and descriptions. Oh, that's great. And are there any other sort of uh, virtual events? Um, oh, I'm looking at, at poetry here. And the Poet Laureate uh, of Somerville, uh, Lloyd Schwartz, uh, who, uh, who I was lucky to see uh, read at the library late last year. Um, so it's great that, that, that he's involved. And then I, I also see uh, Ross Gay. Um, what, what can you tell us about these, these poets? So this year, Lloyd had been hoping, working with Greg Jenkins at the Arts Council to put together another poetry recital. We had one like a year ago at the Armory and he was looking to do another one and then 2020 happened. So we decided it was actually his idea that maybe we could do a collection of video readings. And so Iaritza in our office has done an amazing job compiling um, all these videos. So it's basically 20 different Somerville artists reading um, either one of their poems or one of their favorite poems. And it's being turned into a poetry playlist. Oh, and it's cur great. Yeah, curated by Lloyd. And the idea is that whenever you need a poem, you can go to this, this link, which I think we'll make live on the Monday of Artbeat and um, hear a poem. But then we also like the idea of poetry spilling onto the streets. So we worked with one of our board members, Robert Smith, and he suggested that we use a poem by Ross Gay, who addresses the Black Lives Matter movement and wrote a really beautiful poem called A Small Needful Fact. And that will be um, painted on the bike path by a, a local artist named Nancy Anderson. And then also along the bike path going into Davis Square, we're going to have lawn signs um, with more poems um, created all by Somerville poets. So I think it'll be a nice opportunity to stumble upon poetry and hopefully maybe introduce poetry into everyday life a little more and also give a, a great um, sense of the prodigious talent we have when it comes to poetry in Somerville. Wow, so you have music, you have poetry. Uh, what I'm, I'm looking at uh, at a mural project that you have as well. And I know I'm going to be talking with uh, some of your colleagues at the Arts Council about those in detail. Um, I'll just highlight them here. And uh, just scrolling through this, there's kid-friendly events. Um, there's also dance. Um, so what can, you, what can you tell us about the, uh, the dance? 
Sure. Um, so we have a board member named Emily Beattie who did a great job um, curating the dance um, for Artbeat this year. And kind of like Marcus Santos doing his pop-up drumming, a lot of this dance will be popping up all over Somerville at unannounced times. Um, so you may have the, the, the good fortune, the chance to, to um, stumble upon it and witness it at a safe distance, wearing your mask, obviously. And But the idea is that this will be videotaped and live streamed. So it will actually be a virtual event, but also an actual event. Oh, great. And, yeah. Um, and some of it, and again, kind of like the poetry, it's, it's like art spilling into the streets and dancers just kind of like showing up in a square and interacting with a banister they might find. There's... Hey, um, Emily Beatty herself, the woman who curated it, she's also a dancer and she's going to do something called um, street dances where she's going to try to engage people who are walking by to do some sort of interactive movement dance performance. And then this will be live streamed. So, I mean, it's all a great experiment and it's, I mean, I think it's going to be great. And it's also going to be really interesting to see like what works well, what we might need to shift if, as we're going forward. Um, it sounds it sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, maybe you'll get to dance with Emily. So. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> and then some of the uh, the kid friendly events. I see my uh, cartoonist colleague Dan Moynihan listed here. Um, I see uh, storytellers uh, with uh, Somerville Public Library. Um, what else? Uh, Phil Berman, a by chance concert with Phil Berman and Sock Monkey Circus with Honey Good Enough. Mm -hmm. So these are going to be. Are, are all of these virtual, these particular ones here? These are virtual, yes. Um, but rather than it just being a static performance, um, with, with Phil Berman, for example, um, kids will be, or families will be advised to have some dice ready before they start watching the video. And then they'll roll the dice and depending on what they roll, they'll get a concert based on that number. So again, it's tying into the theme of chance and it's a little more special and, and, and interactive. Oh, and great. then, um, you know, cartooning with Dan Moynihan too is, is, is very interactive. And I forgot that you knew him because he, I remember we worked with him at an art beat probably like, 15 years ago so it's so nice to have him back in the mix oh uh, yeah yeah he's great uh i love i love his uh his work with kids um and let's see taking a look at further down we have uh some interactive activities um take a chance on seeds uh flora and fauna virtual caricatures um what can you tell us about about each of these so just a quick note first on how this was curated. Usually at Artbeat, we have probably 50 different community organizations who set up tables all throughout the festival. And this year, and Heather Balchunas um, in our office usually oversees that. And this year, she had the, I think, brilliant idea to reach out to all the community organizations and say like, well, we can't have you set up a table, but are, are there other ways you'd like to get involved? And can you, you want to tie in some sort of activity or installation to chance? And we had some really great feedback. So a lot of these interactive activities are um, organized by local community organizations like um, the Mystic River Watershed Association, the Somerville Garden Club. So the Garden Club, for example, it's called Take a Chance on Seeds, which is um, a pun on ABBA's Take a Chance on Me, apparently. And the idea is um, they've collected seeds that grow in the Somerville, Somerville area naturally, and they've collected them. And if you show up to a couple of their seed giveaways, you can take one of these packets of seeds, go home and plant them, and then, you know, take a chance and see what comes up and, and what doesn't. Um, and then what else do we have? Oh, we have a, a, a interactive scavenger hunt with buzz roar and the details on that will, um, I think go up on our website on July 10th, but that will be a really fun activity for kids. He's, um, they're doing, uh, chalk drawings all throughout Davis square. And then you have to follow these drawings to find the treasure. Oh, very cool. Yeah. A way to get kids uh, outdoors, ba back engaged in the, in the outdoors, um, away from their virtual events that they've been staring at all spring. <laughs> I think that's such a good point, Dave. And 
I think there really is burnout when it comes to virtual events. When yeah. not that I'm, this isn't awesome talking to you, but just like all the Zoom meetings. And so I think that was why we tried to really find a balance between having some stuff be purely virtual, but also some are create some opportunities to get people outside in a safe way. Yeah. No, yeah, just looking at all this programming, it seems like you all really, really did an amazing job, you know, trying to shape uh, Artbeat this year around the, the taking the limitations of how people interact with one another these, these days and, um, you know, kind of saying, yes, absolutely, we have to, to acknowledge that and have people be socially distant and responsible. But what can we do with that? And um, it looks like you've created a variety of programming that'll allow for a lot of engagement uh, in the way that people expect from Artbeat. Oh, well, thanks for saying that. Um, and I know you're talking with my colleague Heather and a couple artists about the Exquisite Corpse installation at the CVS window, which is great. Um, I just quickly wanted to mention a couple other art exhibits. Um, um, one, we'll have a pop-up exhibit called Chance for Change, um, which has been curated by Iaritza Menjivar in our office. And there's also going to be a floral installation on the traffic island in Davis Square. And I think um, there's a people are really responding to the Black Lives Matter movement. And I think with these art installations and um, especially with the art installations, but other aspects of the festival as well, I think it is, it shows how art um, can be powerful as a form of protest and social activism. Um, so we're really proud to have those elements in the festival this year. That's great. Artbeat takes place July 10th through the 18th this year. Uh, anybody that's curious should head over to the Somerville Arts Council website to see an entire list of programming. It'll be updated all this week. Um, did you have anything else to add, Rachel? Um, I guess the only other thing to add is that um, usually at this time every year, we're frantically watching the weather, hoping it's not going to rain. And this year, like, it doesn't really matter. So I think we're slightly less stressed. Well, good, good. <laughs> Thank you for speaking with me, Rachel Strutt, Cultural Director at the Somerville Arts Council. And uh, I'll, I'll be watching for, for a lot of these Artbeat um, events. And uh, good luck and congratulations with it. Thank you so much, Dave. Hello, I'm Dave Ortega from the Somerville Media Center, and I am happy to be joined with two artists who have been working very closely with the Somerville Arts Council to create a project that is now available to be seen uh, in the CVS windows in Davis Square, uh, and they will be able to see in through a, a good portion of the month of July as part of the Artbeat programming. Uh, I wanted to welcome Stephanie Vecilio, uh to the program. How are you? Yeah, thanks. And Catherine Geismar, welcome to you. Hi. And joining us from the Somerville Arts Council is Heather Balchunas. How are you doing, Heather? Hello, I'm doing well, thank you. So we can we can start off uh, talking about uh, your individual art practices. Um, for the uninitiated, uh, so the Somerville Arts Council manages uh, LCC grants that they get from the state. Uh, to provide uh, fellowship grants to individual artists. And so that was kind of the, the beginning of this story and how it led to this project here. Um, so uh, Stephanie and Catherine, uh, Stephanie, why don't we start with you? What, what kind of uh, medium do you work with? Uh, how long have you been an artist? What's your practice like? Um, so I'm an illustrator. Um, I graduated with my BFA in illustration from the Rhode Island School of Design in 2013. And I moved up here shortly after. Um, I thought that I would be getting into doing children's picture books, which I started out doing for a little bit. I worked at a publisher when I first moved up here. And then I kind of pivoted into doing more comics work. So that's a lot of what I do now. Um, in my professional practice, I do a lot of textile design and packaging design. And then my personal work, I do graphic memoir. 
um, because it really merges um, visual and written narrative, which is um, what I really love to combine for visual storytelling. Very nice. And Catherine? Um, I uh, am a psychologist and uh, left painting for 20 years to get a degree in psychology and raise a family. And so I began back at um, my art career about 10 years ago and um, have really been sort of moving more and more into it. I'm a painter and um, do a lot of portraiture and have recently become uh, more interested in collage and applied for a grant um, because I'm really feeling more and more like I want to be full time into my artwork. Um, so I do a variety of things with it. But. Very nice. And so the, the project that you all have been working on for quite a few months now that's on display um, is an exquisite corpse project. Um, Heather, do you want to fill us in on, on what an exquisite corpse is? Yes, uh, it's actually a very old project that was initiated by the Surrealists in the turn of the century in the 1900s. Uh, it started out as a very simple parlor game where uh, where a person would start it off and fold up uh, pieces of paper and would start off with the head and then another and pass along to another person and that and that would be the body and then the third person would do the legs um, and since then it's kind of transformed and evolved and to go into other different practices uh, musicians actually use it. David Bowie actually made a kind of a, an, an exquisite corpse machine to be able to extract different uh, sections and phrases of sentences to mix them all up and incorporate them into their music. Um, even in other practices, people will like for my art professor would do an exquisite course where everyone would have to go kind of round robin and contribute to a, like one like one painting so basically it was a series of 15 collaborative uh, works of art so it's it's grown and evolved over the years and it's really wonderful to kind of uh, see it in this particular fashion and uh, and it really becomes a community process so kind of inviting community to do spontaneous uh, collaboration Yes, and it's all by chance because one of the things that the Surrealists did and to, to, to keep um, the idea of chance, which falls into this year's art beat theme, is no one can see what the other person is doing. So you really, so it becomes this unexpected surprise. And then um, Catherine, how, how, did, how did this, how did the idea, um, and, and also Stephanie, how, how did the idea to, to um, go with this as a project come about? Well, Heather actually sent an email to all of the grant recipients to see if there was any interest in, in doing an Exquisite Corpse project. And Stephanie and I raised our little hands and said that we were. <laughs> um, and it's a, it's a game that you, I mean, I've played as a kid. I, I imagine Stephanie, did as yeah, well. I used to play this in college all the time. So it was kind of a nostalgic thing for me. Yeah, and me too. And it's, the, the thing is an exquisite corpse is done in person. So, you know, it was created in order to invent the unthinkable because you had three different people creating parts that had no connection to one another that became a, a new whole, but it happens in real time and all together. So that was our beginning was taking Heather's idea and thinking how could we bring this to a group of people in Somerville in real time and create an exquisite corpse of dimensions that would be appropriate for the, we thought that was our big issue, making things big enough for the CVS windows. Hmm. Little did we know. <laughs> yeah, so let's, let's actually expand on that, um, the major change uh, that occurred in the middle of your project. Uh, it's what we're all still dealing with is the, the COVID pandemic. And so Stephanie, um, you know, what, what details can you provide us about like how, how the planning needed to shift? Yeah, so originally we thought we were going to be working with children or teenagers um, in the community at the different schools in Somerville. So the very first week that quarantine started, we actually had had a meeting lined up with one of the art teachers at the high school. 
um, and quarantine hit and we had to really pivot. Um, so then our thinking became, well, how has quarantine affected artists in Somerville? Um, most of the artist house studios weren't allowed to go to their studios. Um, a lot of exhibitions were canceled. So then we thought, how can this project benefit artists instead since we don't have access to the high school facilities now? Um, so then we reached out to um, just Somerville studios and artists in the community and got a really good response. We got 24 participants and um, we actually ended up creating drawing kits for them and personally delivering drawing materials to, um, to every artist. Um, and we dropped these kits off on their doorstep, gave them a time frame of how long they needed to complete their piece by. We picked them up and dropped off the second round, dropped off the third round. <laughs> um, so it became this kind of um, project at home. Yeah, the, the, one of the big challenges is that the exquisite corpse is one body. And so if I draw the head and fold it over so Stephanie can't see what, I'm, what I've done, I leave a little bit of the neck at the bottom so that's where she can begin her body. And right. then she folds that over and leaves a little bit of her body where it ends so the next person can do the legs and feet. So we had to figure out how to do these large scale drawings, say eight heads, and then be able to indicate on the next sheet of paper where the next people who were doing the bodies would begin so that it would all line up, but we also needed to do it by chance. So that was a sort of a really interesting conundrum to solve. How'd you solve it? Well, we ended up, um, we just sent out the first round of the heads first. And when we got those back, we marked off on the second piece of paper where the neck would start. Ah. Other people who got the bodies just had two little lines to go off of. And, and those were assigned by ran at random. Yeah. <laughs> cool. And we also controlled the materials. Um, so everybody had the same materials and we really wanted to try to bring just like some fun to people during quarantine. So we only gave them a pack of Crayola markers, um, <laughs> which a lot of people um, turned out to love them. They like felt like kids again, they told us. Oh, very nice. We had a really positive response about that. Yeah. And um, so like what, what were some of the, um, because as, as I look at these images that you had provided for me, um, I see a nice mix of, you know, fanciful uh, animal characters, but I also see some political messaging as well. I see um, uh, 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 sections that highlight Black Lives Matter. Um, so how, you know, obviously that was part of the timeline of this project when, when uh, there was uh, uh, protests uh, around the end of May and all through June. Mm -hmm. uh, and so how, how did the individual artists let, let, did they let you know beforehand, um, like, this is what we want to do, or it, it, I'm seeing your head shake. <laughs> yeah, no one told us anything. It was completely up to them what they wanted to do. And it's become kind of a, a beautiful record of uh, the temporal moment in which these things were created that, you know, when the heads were being done, there was a pandemic going on and nothing else. And um, the yeah, one person drew a, um a cat head with a mask over it. So that was week one was like, we're in quarantine. Like, yeah. <laughs> and then some of the people finished their bodies before George, George Floyd was murdered and uh, one or two needed more time. And so they spilled over into uh, the legs and feet portion, which was right during the protests. And, um, and so that messaging came in more and more. It was really, it was total. there was no other um, descriptor besides please use these materials and you were assigned a body or you were assigned legs and feet. Well, so that's, that's uh, a nice um, bonus element to this is that it does become a timeline of the events from mid-March all the way up to now, yeah. um, which, you know, creates this extra dimension uh, as, as one experiences it. Um, as By chance. <laughs> What's that? By chance. By chance, yeah. there you yeah. are. <laughs> and so Heather, uh, can you um, talk about how this project is incorporated into the theme of chance and how it fits yeah. into uh, some of the other, like maybe mural projects that you have going on with, with Artbeat? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, uh, first off, I mean, this whole project uh, came about even better than I even imagined. And just working with Stephanie and Catherine has just been such a joy to see how they've uh, how they've organized this and how they've worked with the rest of the artists. So it's just, it's, it's, it's such a wonderful project. And the whole idea, like usually for um, Art Beat, we pick a theme, as you know, and each year it's different. And for the month of like June, July, within that moment, we try to do a call to artists uh, to respond to the Art Beat theme. And and trying to come up with different ways and unique ways to be able to uh, convey chance. And I, and that's where the exquisite corpse came in. I think this would be a perfect idea to be able to uh, illustrate, no pun intended, chance in a really fun way. And, um, and, and it's also nice to get our LCC fellowship winners involved, and this is a good way for them to fulfill their community benefits requirements. So I took a chance to see who would to to see who would go and uh, be wanting to be involved with this. And Stephanie and Catherine came, you know, came about, and um, it kind of ties in really nicely. And and a. And, and a few other our mural projects are gonna be doing. Um, there's gonna be the uh, Growing Center is gonna be doing kind of an art installation over on Vinyl Ave. And their, and, and their uh, work is gonna be Pollination, the Game of Chance, and all about how pollinators and, and flora and fauna kind of work together, but it's all about chance, I mean, Bees aren't very discriminatory about which flower that they go to. So whether a f like a flower gets pollinated or not, that's all de like determined on the like the pollinator itself. So they're going to do that with some organic materials and uh, decorate the fence. And then Groundwork Somerville is going to be also doing a nature mural and going to be invite artists to participate next week. And their theme is um, a chance to rest how the environment now is we're not using planes as much, we're not driving as much, the, um, the earth is taking a little bit of a breath. So that's their theme. And then, um, and then the Mystic Mural Project is that like the, uh, the Mystic Mural uh, Watershed Association is going to be doing uh, an environmental theme as it relates to all the animals around the river um, and how you can take a chance to see some of the lovely wildlife along the river. So those are some of the things that um, are going to be happening as far as some of the chance related uh, um, art installations, but there's also going to be a, a wonderful pop-up exhibit called A Chance for Change that's a uh, related to like the Black Lives Matter movement. And uh, David Fichter has worked with uh, some of the Somerville youth and his uh, protest murals, which are actually movable protest uh, murals, which are amazing. They're gonna be highlighted uh, work by Paula Champagne, which is our featured artist for Art Beat this year. She's gonna be having works of art as well. And, um, and also, let me just go check my notes as far as the like the photographer in there. So I don't. And so it's going to be. So the featured artists for David Victor's Megan Barnes, uh, Xerxes, Anthony. And then um, Vanessa Leroy will have black and white uh, images on that as well. So that is gonna be for one day only. And uh, that is going to be on uh, July uh, uh, 12th. And there is a rain date for that too. So I think that's it for what I got, but we have, but you can see our full schedule uh, on our website. So we're gonna be populating that. Um, so that should be up in the next uh, few days. And you can uh, see all the wonderful things that's gonna be happening for July 10th through the 18th. Very nice.
And um, Catherine and Stephanie, were there any particular, um, I mean, obviously we talked about the main challenge with this project. Uh, are there any other challenges uh, that you want to highlight or is there any, you know, particular um, anecdote or, or anything about this that, uh, that you want to highlight? I think, I mean, just the, the planning of it took us a while. Mm -hmm. um, it was a lot of organization. Um, just at first glance, it seems like, oh, you can just hand a piece of paper to an artist and let them do their thing. But we actually had to do a lot of prep work. Um, I don't know, Catherine, you want to speak? Well, and, and added, ooh, excuse me, added to that was, um, you know, the challenge of making sure that everything we did was gonna be safe and sanitary. And, you know, it, it added a whole level of uh, daring do to a project that really wasn't necessarily so daring. Um, I can say for me that I've been an artist in Somerville for over a decade now, and I hadn't encountered more than half of these artists and I hadn't seen their work. And it was such a pleasure to interact with them in the minimal way that we did to see the work that they had done. And, um, you know, so great that so many people were game and up for doing something like this um, in a moment where uh, it seemed like it could be kind of challenging. Yeah, like we really had to make people feel like this was a safe project that they could do. Um, and like to reiterate that I also haven't met most of these artists before and I've I've been here for like six years now um so it was really great to meet other members of our community and in the quick like drop off drive bys that we did with the drawing kits um the few people that I got to meet were just so friendly and welcome I got to like see a couple people's studios um and it's just so great that we have these connections now too and everyone's had a really positive and joyous response to the show. Right. Great. And so instead of um, the community of making something together in real time, we have the community of these artifacts of what were made that then come together in real time in the exhibit. And it's, uh, it's kind of really, it's a very cool thing. Very cool. And uh, in the last few minutes that we have here, where can people see more of your individual works? Uh, Stephanie. Um, so uh, you can see my website is stephaniebicellio.com and I also post a lot more casual sketch type stuff on my Instagram, which is at step in honey. Not Steph and honey, it's step in honey. <laughs> <laughs> and Catherine? Um, I show at Brownfield Gallery in Boston. Um, so that's one place. And my website is guysmarart.com and my Instagram is at guysmarart. So Very any nice. of those places. Excellent. Um, and so we encourage people to head out to Davis Square to see these in person. Um, Heather, when do they come down? It's probably towards the end of uh, July. Okay. Um, around that time frame. So, um, but you can also see some of the great works over on online on our Facebook page and also on our website too as well. So uh, you can you can you can share and experience it that way too. Very nice. And we've been using the hashtag exquisite corpse Somerville on Instagram if anybody wanted to share their own exquisite corpses. Um, it's a fun game to play with your family. Um, so we welcome people to try and post and share it if they'd like to. Very nice. Uh, Stephanie Vicellio and Catherine Geismar, artists who uh, have worked on this exquisite corpse project. Thank you for joining me. Um, and thank you, Heather Valchunas from the Somerville Arts Council. Thanks thank you, David. Thank you.